Hello, welcome to Natural Treatment of Ear Infections. I'm Dr. David Hogg, licensed naturopathic doctor. First, I want to talk to you about the naturopathic treatment philosophy. It's first, do no harm. We identify and treat the cause. We use the healing power of nature, treat the whole person, and doctor is teacher, and that prevention is the best cure. But we believe we treat the real cause of disease, and the cause of disease is lowered vitality, abnormal composition of blood and lymph, and accumulation of waste matter and abnormal substances. In conventional medicine, the way they work is they treat the symptoms and effects using drugs and surgery. Now, the back, some background on ear infections. 94% of children before two years of age will have an ear infection. Peak age is usually six to 13 months. It's uncommon after age six and in healthy children. And most common childhood diagnosis and half of all childhood visits to pediatricians. And, and overuse of antibiotics contributes to bacterial resistance. Now, the more introduction is that there are three billion dollars annually spent in healthcare costs and 25 million prescriptions of antibiotics annually. Over two million uh, basically ear tubes are done annually. Now, where does ear infection really come from? What's, what's its real cause? Well, we believe as naturopathic doctors it's mostly caused by food allergies, dairy products, wheat, corn, sugars, any other allergies, uh, sinusitis, you know, runny nose, uh, going to daycare, secondhand smoke, and lack of breastfeeding. Now the risk associated with uh, ear infections is that eustachian tube is typically shorter, you know, when children are, are under six years of age, and eustachian tubes are prone to obstruction by the adenoid tissue. So if the tonsils or the adenoids swell, that will close off the eustachian tube and hence then cause the fluid to build up in the ears, causing the infection and pain. Middle ear effusion, that's when the fluid builds up. That breeds bacteria and viruses and may contain uh, neither viruses or bacteria, one of them or both. So is the middle ear infection infected or are bacteria merely proliferating, growing, and trap fluid? Or are the bacteria responsible for the fluid or are they there as a result of the fluid? So food for thought. Inflammation and edema, so swelling in the area of the nasopharynx, basically the back of the throat, or within the eustachian tube contributes to eustachian tube obstruction and the pathogenesis, the causes of otitis media, which is an ear infection. Now, middle ear effusion, what that is, 50% of children have effusion, so fluid in the ear, that persists for one month following acute infection, and 90% of effusions resolve in three months without treatment. Now, the diagnosis of an ear infection is dependent of the cooperation of the child on exam, and I've experienced that a few times myself. Sometimes children don't want to let you look in their ears, and, but you can pretty much tell by the pain. So, and the earache is, comes from increased fluid pressure in the ear. Uh, it's also caused by a uh, history of upper respiratory infection or a red bulging eardrum, and then also fever and chills is another way to diagnose it. This is a normal eardrum. Okay, got this from Medscape. Thank you, Medscape. And then we can see an acute uh, otitis media, acute ear infection. Okay, you can see the bulging eardrum. And this with, is with uh, effusion, so you can see the bubbles behind the eardrum. It's pretty clear that there is fluid. Now let's take let's take a look at conventional treatment. So what they use for ear infections are antibiotics, analgesics, so painkillers, antihistamines, 
looking for any um, allergies. Um, Meringeotomies, where they take a laser and they make a hole in the eardrum. And the tympanostomy tubes, where they actually put a tube in the air to have the fluid drain. Okay. Now, antibiotics studies. Amoxicillin is the most common. Uh, does this follow naturopathic principles? It really doesn't because you're following, you're treating a germ instead of getting rid of the fluid. Why are we not? Antibiotics given orally attack bacteria everywhere in the body, even healthy bacteria. 96% of patients with ear infections are treated with antibiotics. 80% of episodes resolve in two to seven days without antibiotics. I hope that tells a lot. You know, tells you a lot. Uh, mastoiditis occurrence is one in 100,000. So they'll tell you that they want to give antibiotics to prevent mastoiditis, but it still only occurs one in 100,000 people. Current studies on antibiotics. Watchful waiting is favored over antibiotics. This lists five different studies that show doing nothing is better than antibiotics. And it shows that by the time antibiotics are given, the infection has begun to resolve on its own. Also, antibiotic therapy provides limited clinical benefit and promotes bacterial resistance. Now, let's look at, you know, either making a hole in the eardrum or putting a tube in. So, prompt insertion of, you know, tympanostomy tubes does not improve developmental outcomes. That means there's nothing to worry about if you don't put a tube in as far as their development. It's not going to help. Uh, basically, putting tubes in results in far more, you know, basically eardrum abnormalities by the age of five. And prolonged period of watchful waiting seems desirable. So, again, doing nothing when there's an ear infection is actually better in the game than giving an antibiotic or putting a tube in. Now let's look at naturopathic treatments. Very different. So the first thing we look at is dietary avoidance. So we also treat, use uh, homeopathy, herbal medicine, supplements, breastfeeding or bottle feeding with human milk, uh, humidifiers, and I do a lot of parent education in my practice. Now, dietary avoidance, which to me is where the cause really comes from, because the environment of the body is the problem. That's what caused the ear infection. So we change the environment, then we're treating the cause of how the infection got there at all. So first thing I take uh, children off is all dairy products. Uh, second, we might have to take have to t also take them off wheat and gluten foods, possibly corn, and sugars. Bacteria love sugars. Okay, let's examine the homeopathic treatment of ear infections. But homeopathy in this study shows it's better than a placebo. Another study showed 72% pain relief within 12 hours. Another showed 70% free of recurrence, a max of three, with homeopathy versus 43% having recurrence, a max of six, within one year treated with antibiotic. Even if you don't believe in homeopathy, it's still better than giving an antibiotic. And homeopathy treats is it's based on individual symptoms including mental emotional. It stimulates the body's ability to heal itself and increases the body's resistance to allergies and infections. Now herbal medicines. I frequently give uh, an herbal formula containing these herbs to children with ear infections. It, quite, it helps quite a bit. Uh, there's a herbal extract for ear pain, uh, allium sativum, which is garlic, there's mullein calendula and uh, St. John's wort and olive oil, is as effective as anesthetic ear drops, according to this study. Uh, these herbs, horehound, elderberry, elecampane, mullein, and wild cherry bark, these are all expectorants and they help, what they do is they help get the mucus, anything out of, uh, all the mucus and everything out of the nose so that the swelling of the tonsils and adenoids and all the nasal mucosa comes down, right? All that swelling comes down so that the, the uh, 
basically your station tube opens up and the ears can drain. This again to me is really treating the cause. Also supplements are really helpful. Vitamin C, probiotics, especially if they've been on antibiotics, you definitely want to give probiotics. Beta carotenes or vitamin A, zinc, uh, biflavonoids. Sometimes physical medicine really helps craniosecal therapy, manipulation, hot compresses over the ears, uh, humidifiers. Now let's look at some uh, cases. This is case one. So here's a four-year-old boy with chronic ear infection uh, accompanied by sinusitis. So he had a lot of swelling in the nose. He had uh, right side effusion, so it flew in the ear, uh, and the ear was really red, uh, red and swollen. Uh, you can see lots of blood vessels in the eardrum. It was mild on the left side. Uh, swollen and red uh, right nasal, you know, inside of the nose. Mild on the left side. So it's consistent with uh, right side ear infection. And child also had a daily consumption of milk. So what we did is that educated the parent on treating the cause. Dietary avoidance of dairy and wheat. Uh, herbal extract, uh, basically uh, to get, again, to get the mucus out, and instruct the parents on patient's nose would be draining a mucus and to allow that symptom to express. So when I give these herbs as expectorants, what I want to make sure happens is that I want the nose to drain. If it gets clogged and stopped up, that's going to cause an infection. So you want to keep that mucus flowing, get it out as soon as possible, and the ear infection will resolve followed up after four days there was only slight swelling of the right basically the right inside the right nose uh, the color was pink instead of red and no swelling on the left the left eardrum was normal right side was pink in color and one month follow-up uh, the mother reported the patient's doing very well here's another case here one-year-old uh, very irritable in ear infection Originally presented with irritability and gave a homeopathic remedy with only mild relief of the, of the irritability. And later presented with a right side ear infection. And so I changed the homeopathic prescription with complete resolution. And here's a third, a third case. Uh, there was a five year old, the ear infection, had a left sided ear infection, very clingy to the mother, uh, daily consumption of milk, craving for bread. Uh, so we have a homeopathic remedy, the very quick resolution of symptoms, eliminated dairy and wheat from the diet, has had no recurrence of ear infections since eliminating dairy and wheat from the diet. So the conclusions, avoiding antibiotics with watchful waiting has better outcomes. Delaying, basically putting tubes in the ears by watchful waiting is superior and does not interfere with development. And removing the cause of the symptoms in the first place by avoiding allergic foods, correcting allergic rhinitis and sinusitis, naturally, thereby avoiding ear tube dysfunction. Giving symptom relief with homeopathy and herbal medicines is superior to antibiotics. And these are the references. All right, so thank you so much. I uh, hope you enjoyed learning more about naturopathic uh, treatment of ear infections. Have a great day.